my gosh, this is so fun because it's like Friday Eve, right? Oh, I feel like we're playing hooky on I us. know, but listen, it, look, it's here and we should just order it because you know how I feel about a Paloma, right? What do you think about getting a double instead of a single? Oh, always a double. Always oh, a double. Oh my gosh, wait a minute, Courtney, what time is it? Oh. Is it one? Oh my gosh. Oh my one gosh, it's one o'clock. Um. Ooh. Well, I mean, they're here. You know? As long as they're here, the show can probably wait, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, that's what this is all about. Okay, one last look at the menu. Okay, okay. we've got uh, Moscow Mule. Oh, whiskey sour. I that know, sounds good. But then ranch water and then the frozen cocktails. Look at all the frozen cocktails. Oh, I didn't even see that section. So yes. they're like a blended cocktail? Yes, so I believe the bovine and barley menu has expanded. You know, the last time we saw this truck, it was just like a white truck, but yeah. now they've really brought on some color. Let, you ready to order? I think so. Oh, hi, Louise. Hi, Louise. Hi, Louise. Wow. How are you? What's up? Christina. Long time no see. No, it's been a couple months, and we first met each other when you rolled up to our house and delivered us some margaritas at the start of COVID. Yeah. And your husband's birthday, you celebrated with this adult ice cream truck. I did. A week after you guys started your bovine and barley truck delivery in Houston, and uh, now you've got these beautiful trucks, wrap trucks. Your menu is expanded. Tell me. Houstonians are loving this. Oh, absolutely. It's perfect weather to have a frozen cocktail. We'll deliver straight to your door. Social distance party, office happy hours, neighborhoods, call us, text us. We'll be there. You'll deliver to people's offices? Absolutely. Oh, well, I guess technically this well, is yeah, We office. are at work. <laughs> should, we play, should we place our order so you guys can hit the road again? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do the wheel. Paloma. Okay. And I'll do the whiskey sour, please. Okay, coming right up. Okay, Christina, while you guys are working okay. on that, how has this drink delivery saved y'all's business? I mean, we were able to keep most of our employees employed, uh, obviously bring a little uh, sense of sanity, paradise to everybody that's stuck at home. So it's been awesome, phenomenal. Well, and your staff, your team is so nice. Introduce the guys in the truck. This is Ernesto. Hey. Ernesto's hey, Ernesto. right there. Angel, Angel what's up? Hey, what's up? They have their drinks for this you. Like the best job in the world. Wow, look at that. Here's your Paloma. Awesome, thank you. And your whiskey sour. Thank you so much. What's that extra little bottle of booze right there? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding now. In the back pocket for later. Just for later. <laughs> A little floater just oh, in case, true. right? Awesome. And then just some extra for the road. Oh, and are you staff. serious? Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Christina. And to the whole gang and Luis who uh, opened the door for us. And if people want to order this, for their, I don't know, co-workers. It or, is a holiday um, weekend, right? Are Absolutely. you guys delivering this weekend? Yes, text, call 832-547-0912 and we'll get it delivered to you. And, and easier than that, bovineandbarley.com. Absolutely, and they go by zip code and all of that, so it's so awesome. We appreciate you keeping us sort Thank of you. hydrated, hydrated during this time. Yeah, and we know <laughs> you have a lot of deliveries to make, so guys, stay safe out there. Thank you. And stay cool. It's great to see you. Yeah, Bye. happy Friday oh, Eve. Best surprise <laughs> ever. Thanks, guys. I know. Bye, Louise. Good to see you, bud. You know, it's a great day at the office when this thing, when this happens, you know? Yeah, and it also is a great day for air conditioning. I'm reminded, Whoa. like, just how warm it is outside in Houston right now. Hello, y'all. Welcome back to the studio. <sighs> yeah. Goodness. It's good in here. Well, that was Ooh. a fun little surprise. It, it was awesome. If you guys awesome. have never tried the cocktail delivery thing, I think you're the one who found it on Instagram, right? I did, and it had come to um, a few stops in my neighborhood, and it's just a little hot outside, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> um, but when for Orlando's birthday, for his socially distant birthday, I said, okay, let's just do this. We had the driveway, um, everybody standing there, and we had bovine and barley come. And i got to tell you, you know, restaurants, bars, they have gotten very, very creative during this time. And as you heard from Christina, it al this allowed them to keep most of their employees on the books, which yeah. is so important. Yeah, a lot of businesses, we've mentioned so many times that businesses have had to get creative to stay afloat. They're the nicest people too. And yeah. it's interesting because a lot of people, once Bovina Barley started doing this cocktail delivery thing, a lot of other people started doing it as well. You right. know, sharing the love, spreading the wealth. I love their colorful vans. Show them some love. Tell them we say hi if they roll up to your house. Because I'm telling you, when they rolled up literally on the street in front of our house yeah. and I just walked out and ordered 
It's so awesome. It was like Christmas morning. When I came back at, into the house, Brandon thought it was like this magical, you know, too good to be true scenario. But thankfully, right. that is one of the silver linings that has come out of this whole stay at home thing. And let me tell you something, you guys, you saw the staff, you saw Christina out in the van. She's the one answering the texts. She's the one answering the emails. This is not a staff of, you know, 7,500 people. Uh, they are doing multiple jobs at once. Be patient, and they, they will get to you and put your order in, but you'll be happy when they arrive. It's Well, and last time I ordered them at home, I texted Christina, and she was like, okay, we're coming. She had like 200-plus text messages yeah. that had just come in. So, yeah, be patient. It's worth it. Whew, a little, uh, a little sweaty outside. <laughs> No. My goodness. Woo, goodness okay, gracious. Well, thanks once again to Bovine and Barley. And I know. they did give us a little uh, sushi delivery from The Fish, which is great. Um, one of their, their sister restaurants. So check this out. I know. A little Isn't that sushi beautiful? box. Perfect for lunchtime. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yum, yum, yum. Because I skipped, I skipped lunch today. You know, one of the things that I did this morning. What? I had to run an errand, and it's been such a long time since I've been to the Galleria, and I go out and I've got, you know, the glasses and the mask and, you know, being very careful, right, because I know that's, like, maybe not the best thing to do these days, uh, to go anywhere, right? right? But I had to do this errand, and as long as I was at the Galleria, I walked by our old Houston Life studio, mm -hmm. and I went to E-Bar, and I saw Jeanette. Oh! Sweet Jeanette, and apparently a lot of the, the E-Bar folks who we haven't seen in, like, two years, Jeanette's still there, Ed is still there. Oh, my gosh. And if you guys have your local market or your local coffee shop or your restaurant, you know when you go so many times, you, you become, like, first-name basis with these people, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, because you see them every day. I see them every day. I had my, you know, my morning routine, and we, I mean, we ordered a lot of coffee from we the did. bar. But it was so nice to go back and say hi to Jeanette, and she wrote a sweet message on my cup. But as I was standing there, I realized right now, uh -huh. like right this moment, this is the two-year anniversary since we did our last show at the mall. Crazy. And said goodbye. Oh, I just gleeked. Oh, it's okay. I didn't notice. Okay, good. Let me put my mask back <laughs> Put that back on. <laughs> Sorry well, cheer, about cheers to onward and upward, my friend. Cheers to onward and upward. And there were a lot of things about the mall, certainly people that we missed. That that really is what we miss the most about the mall. But it really is unbelievable to think that two years ago we said goodbye to the mall. On the fifth, it's my four-year anniversary of moving to Houston. Unbelievable. I know, and this is just such a fun life, and things are things are good. Every single day I am so grateful that my family is healthy and that, you know, my personal life seems to all be in line in my professional life. I have coworkers I love. So it's nice to sort of take a moment to reflect on all of that. And honestly, it's all of you guys who have kept us on the air. Um, plenty of viewers want our show canceled. That's fine too, Karen. Right. But for the rest of you, <laughs> Um, we're still here, and yeah. the audience is growing, and of course we have our new time slot, but my goodness, it's nice to sit back and, and just sort of think about what's gone by. Absolutely, and it, it is another, um, it just solidifies the fact that when you, you blink and time passes you by, and so when you think about coming up on your four-year anniversary, two years of celebrating here in the studio, last, you know, last show in the mall, it goes by so fast. Yeah, it does. I know. And I sort of do miss the, like, the random stranger walking onto our set from the mall. Remember that day that guy walked in? We were doing a cooking segment. Yeah. And he walked in. He was like, oh, well, samples, bro. Oh. And, and I you totally, were like, get off. I totally <laughs> mama bared the situation. It was, like, it was like one of my children walking up on the stage. Yeah. I'm sorry. It wasn't really a stage. <laughs> walking up on the platform. On our set. Probably more. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah, there was no security. None. No. 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 <laughs> there was none. The set, oh. the set had, like, lights hanging from Home Depot. It was I was like, know. Derek, can you bring a flashlight from home? One of, the, one of the lights burned out. We need when some we, extra lighting. We would walk in in the morning, and there would be dead cockroaches all over the floor. <laughs> I remember on the phone before when I was um, thinking about coming here, right, coming uh, to Houston Life, and you said... Oh, and I was trying to talk you out of it. You're, you said, we have to take, I take out the garbage. I said, what? What do you mean you take out the garbage? Well, yeah, I take out the garbage at the mall. And I thought, I, I don't. I said your jaw would drop. And you said, it just did. It did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Take out the trash down the, you know, the corridors of the mall, down to the incinerator or the giant trash compactor. Oh, man, memories. Hey, we got a really sweet video and from a viewer. What? And you painted that set, didn't you? That set. 
You did, right? Can we change the subject okay. now? Everybody's painted it, right? Am I right or wrong? You're correct. Yeah. You're correct. And we have got to find, do, guys, do we have that clip? I know we don't have it right now, but do we have the clip of that first promo of Houston Life where it was like, you oh, know, please like, find it. We, we hired please get it. like a whole team of dancers. It was choreography and we at its best. And were on best. green screen, but the green screen wasn't just like a painted floor. It was actually fabric green screen. So oh. my move was that I had to like, yeah, and Derek, spin, wow. But on the day of the shoot, the green screen was fabric. Oh, and so, so I every went to time spin, you spin and it was like, and here comes Derek. Spin, spin, ugh, as I twisted oh, the fabric around. My. So the promo came out, right? And my all my friends in Utah and California were so confused. They were like, wait a minute, Dancing? we thought this was like a, a talk show. You're hosting like a mall dance program? <laughs> And like I was like, yeah, size, but I better. <laughs> I know, and I painted the set. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Onward and upward, my friend. Oh, man. Well, <sighs> cheers to new beginnings. Yes. And cheers to old nightmares. Cheers. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We do miss them all every mm -hmm. day. So what I was just about to say about the viewer, we got this video that is so, so cute. We got to oh, show gosh. you this. And so check out this little, little pup there. Well, Gizmo. Gizmo, he sees, uh, I guess, text on the screen. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Gizmo, that is the cutest thing I've ever seen. And text could, couldn't be bothered. Okay. Oh, my word. And Liz, his owner, says uh, Gizmo's a little terrier mix rescued from Bark. We love Bark, such a fantastic organization. Liz, my question for you is, does this happen every single day when Gizmo sees text? Probably, right? I can, when hear he's her, on? I can hear her saying yes at yes. home. Yes, that's a yes. Okay. I can see Liz nodding her head at home right now. Gizmo is adorable. Let us know if you need a dog sitter because we're very good with dogs. At I like his one ear up and down, you know? That was cute. Terrier mixes are so, so adorable. Fun. I love their crazy hair. Yeah. Like the wiry. <laughs> no? Is no, that not I funny? Do. Oh, okay. No, it is. So I'm just thinking of something. Um, yeah. There, what are you thinking of? A long time ago, I used to date this guy, and he had a terrier mix. Gizmo reminds me of terrier mix, right? And, but the dog's name was Mickey. And I remember, like, one morning, like, waking up, and this guy, like, would not wake up. And I'm like, wake up, wake up. He slapped me in the face and was like, Mickey, no. The dog? Oh, he thought you were the dog? Yeah. Oh, no. I know. Has that ever happened to you? Uh-uh. You think Oscar's licking your foot, and it's not actually Oscar? No, it happened to me with a possum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. We talked about it on the show. Yes. Oh, man, I am still sweating from it's being outside. It's a little outside, wide. The drinks are good, right? What drinks, did you get? The drinks are so good. I think I got a whiskey sour. Oh, yeah. But I don't know. You know me. I drink out of the toilet at home. I'll drink whatever. Mm-hmm. Not picky. That's okay. I'll drink Paloma. out of a box, a can. Paloma's good. Mm. Very good on this hot day. You know what? Mm. I heard something on the weather today that it feels like... 106? Yeah. Yeah, the feels like temperature. That's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it's just Houston. I know, but I feel like it's too early for 106. That's like August. I mean, that's like it September. Is July. You know, but it's it's a little bit later, usually. When the kids go back to school, hopefully that's gonna happen. That's usually when it's 104. When the kids go back to school. <laughs> They'll be in college by the time they go back to school. I know. 2025. I hope I'm not their teacher. She's pretty, but she's mean. <laughs> so wine club is something that we've been doing on Wednesdays. This has been so fun. Yeah, and it turns out uh, some of you out there also enjoy sipping some wine once in a while. Yeah. So we've decided to expand our wine club and invite all y'all, okay? That's that's proper English, right? All y'all? Yes, we want that's all more than one. To come along yeah. and register for our wine club. Um, you know, just just whip out the uh, the iPad or the, the laptop and go to our website, HoustonLife.tv. And this is so cool because it's sort of like being in the know before anything is released. You know how we like to get, you know, you want to know what's going on before it actually happens. So by registering, you get exclusive access to things like information on upcoming wine club segments, eligibility for contests and giveaway, also eligibility <clears throat> to participate in f future virtual wine tastings. 
Oh. Yes. So, you know, like we do a thing called bingo where we have this bingo game. I mean, look, we are the gift that keeps on giving. That's all I have to say. We invite, yes. If we do say so ourselves, we're the <laughs> gift that keeps on giving. But it's fun, right? Because we're we're allowing our the viewer, you guys, who we love so much, to have fun with us when we're not on the air. I just saw your shirt and thought that word summer was on screen. I thought it was like a graphic on the screen that said summer. It, it's real. It is really cute. Thank you. I think you it's the like a gift that third. keeps on giving line. I think you should say that about yourself in the future. No, <laughs> no. No, I'm talking about the wine club. Okay, I, I am totally there with you. And one of our favorite parts about bingo is just hanging out with people. It's right? so fun. Before we even play the game, it's like an hour and a half went by before we even started bingo because we were all laughing and getting to know each other. Was it an hour and a half? I think so. No, I don't think No, it, was it wasn't? I think it was like maybe 30 minutes had gone by. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I have no sense of time. <laughs> It, I think it was 30 minutes. But what's great, especially now during times of social distancing, right? It's fun. It was like we were hanging out with our friends in Pearland and in Midtown and in Spring and in Katy and in Baytown, all over the place. Deer Park. We had viewers from all over the place when we played bingo. And the goal with Wine Club is to do that same sort of thing, right? Right. I mean, you could actually call bingo Wine Club, too, because a lot of people had wine while they were playing bingo. But and other it was people great. had other things. It's, the, it's bingo. Not to be confused with Wine club. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's wine in bingo. There's not bingo in wine. Correct. Two different. How is that? <laughs> Sorry, the heat really got to me Oh, today. boy. Goodness. But these drinks, these are good. These are nice. Can you imagine having the truck roll by? Seriously, I mean, I know this is our workplace. This is our office, but we're weirdos. So the show is, like, kind of exempt from an office. Totally. But, like, imagine a regular office where people are, like, sitting at desks typing. Right. Well, I guess we it's do gonna that. It's going to go too. down... Well, yeah, I guess we do. We do have an office. <laughs> and we do type at our desks. It's very dusty these days. Um, kidding. We're at our desks every day. But uh, seriously, thank you so much for joining us today on this Thursday, July 2nd, right? Today's Thursday. July 2nd. July 2nd. Yes, Friday July Eve, 2nd. everybody. We're so glad to have you with us. The time is 1.17 p.m. And we've got a great show for you, as We always. do. Of course, we're on the heels of a 4th of July weekend. And if are you guys ready for a new project? Okay, we're going to tell you how to liven up your 4th of July celebration from home with some festive decor. We're going to share three budget-friendly projects to help your socially distant party go off with a bang. Without yeah. with. I'm very confused. Go off with a bang. With like, a bang. Like, like it's bang, great. It's exciting. Okay. Boom. Without a hitch. Okay. okay. I think that's where I'm struggling. That's going to be fun. And you know, <laughs> we're also going to get serious uh, chatting about water safety. Lauren Kelly is highlighting the importance of water safety with Tony Guillory from the Aquatics Department at the YMCA. So you'll want to take notes because he's going to have the safest flotation devices parents can keep handy by the pool. And very important tips you must know before taking your little ones out for a swim this summer and after the break five children's books that celebrate diversity we have a list that can help your little ones understand inclusion and empathy when we come back Welcome back. Books offer a way for children to see themselves or see experiences different from their own. That's why they're a great tool to teach our young ones about inclusion, empathy, and race. Valerie Kohler with Blue Willow Bookshop in West Houston shared their picks for best books to educate your kids about diversity starting at the age of three. Hello, Derek and Courtney. I'm so thrilled to be here with you today to talk about books for young children um, to open the discussion about diversity and empathy. The first book I'm gonna talk about is Strictly No Elephants by Lisa Manchap. In this book, a little boy has a pet elephant. When it's club day, club meeting day, he arrives at the club and there is a big sign on the door that says, Strictly No Elephants. So he's left out because he has an unusual pet. What he does is he wisely makes his own pet club and in his pet club, everyone is welcome, including all pets. And it's a wonderful story to talk about empathy, kindness and inclusiveness. The next book I have for you today is a beautiful book called The Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson. And in this book, a little girl is starting school for the first time. And what she finds is that not everyone looks like her, 
but she also finds out that everyone has their own unique differences. And in this book, we learn that it's a glorious world that we live in and we each have our own differences, but we also have our own sameness and we also have things that we have in common. So it's also a really, really great first of day of school book, but also a, a way to discuss that we have differences, but we also have things in common. My next book is All Are Welcome by Alexandra Pinfold. You can tell by these colorful illustrations on the cover that there are kids of all shapes and sizes from all over the world gathering together in a school setting, and they are all accepting of the differences that they have and the commonality that they have. It's cheerful, it's bright, and it's a great way to welcome kids to the school year in a way that you can see that the children have something in common. My next book is by Lupita Nyong'o, and this is Solwe. Solwe, as you can see with this gorgeous illustration by Vashti Harrison, is a beautiful young girl. But Solwe doesn't believe she's beautiful. She thinks she's too dark because in her family, there are all shades of darkness. But with a mother's love and a father's love, Sulwe is reassured that she is beautiful in her own right. I think it's a great introduction to talk about color and to talk about ways that everyone is beautiful in their own way. My last book is the award-winning The Undefeated by Kwame Alexander with the gorgeous illustrations by Kadir Nelson. This is a tribute to African Americans. This is a tribute to people who have come and gone, people that we know today. And it opens up the conversation about some people that we might not know that did some really, really powerful things in their day. Um, movers and shakers, we have musicians, we have artists, we have politicians. We have people of all kinds from all walks of life in here. And it's a loving, moving tribute to all of them. This is a time when I think we need to talk about, uh, talk about these important books. And hopefully this summer you will take an opportunity to stop by the store and learn more about these books and other books that you can share with children and open up conversations in your family, in your classroom. And I'm thrilled to just be here to be able to help you in that endeavor. Very nice. If you would like to connect with Valerie, you can check out the Scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. All of that entire selection sounds fabulous. We'll be right back. Uh, cheers, everyone. Our friends at Bovine and Barley. You know them. They deliver all over Houston. Oh, Katie, wake up. <laughs> Wearing her sunglasses. I know. Well, cheers. in there. What's great is they've expanded their menu. When they first started back in April, uh, their menu was quite limited. Now it's three separate sections. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cheers. It's so good. Bovineandbarley.com. By the way, I've been eating this uh, the fish delivery we had during commercial so breaks. Good. It's delicious if you want some sushi to go. Um, very nice. I know. Okay, so this is normally the time, our favorite time of the show, and we highlight our student artwork. Uh, we're starting to wind down, obviously, because we're here, uh, or because I'm back here, but some special artists did some really great work for us. Yeah, and yesterday we featured three of my nieces. I have four. Yes. The youngest, Samantha, is five. And so today we have a collection that also includes Samantha. And uh, yeah, let's just put them up. So this is Samantha. She's five years old. And you got to look closely, Courtney. Okay. So it's actually under the sea. So that line you see at the top yep. is like the surface, the water surface. And then my head is near the top left of the screen. Oh, yes, I see That's it. That's me. So I'm treading water swimming. You're um, snorkeling, I guess. Okay. And uh, yes, you're under the sea, just sort of enjoying Beautiful. all of the beauty of the colorful sea creatures. I love it. And I'm so, so happy that all four of them took part in the art project, the HL art project, because it was super fun. And who did this one? This is uh, Scarlett. She's seven. So we're getting more, we're getting more artwork. Daily. Daily. <laughs> They've been texting me. And yeah, Scarlett <laughs> repeated the pattern. Look at this. London did this one, the H and the L. And look at that. Yes. A little champagne glass, some oh, ice cream cones. That and is H. so cute. Very clever. And the slice of watermelon. 
and the night sky. Yeah, Houston Life After Dark. This is by Bella, who is 11, and she did such a fantastic job with the night sky. How did she do that? I wonder what she used. I like don't a know. Dark is it that scrape a... paper? Is it the paper that you scrape away, or did she use yeah, black maybe. paper? I'll ask her. I don't know, I'll but it's her very, I'll, I love them all. Well, thanks again to my nieces, Bella, London, Scarlett, and Samantha. They are fantastic, and I miss you all, but we'll settle for FaceTime until we can be together in person. I know. So sweet. All right, so we have some viewer comments to get to on our social media page, and um, um, this is so funny. Um, Raquel wrote in, Karen, just that name <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I can't, dead cockroaches, I can't read this. I'm gonna have to get up and move because it's usually on the norms. Uh, Y'all are killing me with the memories, lots of love. Oh, sorry, I can't read you, it. Thank you, Raquel. Yeah, hashtag just the name. It's true, it's, uh, and sorry if your name is Karen. It's, that's, it's just, you know, the world we live in today. I always, yeah, I always apologize if your name is yes, Karen. Yes, we love Karen. We right? love real Karen. Most of them. Um, Beverly writes in, we had bovine and barley in our neighborhood last month and they were awesome. Margaritas were delish. Love you guys, cheers. Aww. Oh, Beverly, cheers, I'm so glad you checked them out. They are delicious. Delicious indeed. Uh, and Gail writes in, pictures please of the old set, which I wish I have seen the HL at the Galleria. Oh, oh boy, we might, okay. Gail, have you ever seen The Nightmare Before Christmas? <laughs> Just watch that movie and uh, <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. That pretty much sums it up. Oh, you're breaking out in hives just we talking have, about it. And here we only we have uh, fake cockroaches in our studio. In fact, our uh, our stage manager <laughs> Jason, Jason just tossed us some. So we we have the fake cockroaches as a nod to the old yes, ones in the mall. Perfect. This okay. Will be a good time. Lots more stuff to get to today. Okay. Uh, coming up next, water safety tips for when heading to the pool this summer. Lauren Kelly chats with Tony Guillory of the YMCA's Aquatics Department about what parents need to know before taking the family for a swim. All right, good afternoon to you. I hope you're dealing with the heat pretty well. We've got several months of it to go. It is warmer than normal out there, and it is dustier than normal. Take a look at this shot. This is downtown. You can barely see it there in the distance, thanks to the Saharan dust. So if it's irritating you, you may want to stay in the air conditioning. Good thing, though, the dust is going to diminish from here on out. So we're looking better from that standpoint. Heat-wise, though, it's going to be with us. It's July. It's Houston. Temperatures low to mid-90s around town right now. The dust is tapering off tomorrow a little bit less dense than today and the same thing for fourth of july saturday and into next week i think we're looking pretty decent maybe some residual dust here and there but no big plumes to deal with air is uh, on the moderate side as far as health goes out there so it could be worse definitely even though it does look pretty bad it feels like the triple digits in many places between about 100 and 105 that's what it feels like when you factor in the humidity high temperatures today getting into the mid 90s that's a couple of degrees above normal for this time of year. A mix of sun and clouds, your hair, just put it up in a ponytail. It's going to be frizzy. That's just the way it is. Fourth of July forecast, 96 degrees, only a 20% chance of rain in the afternoon. Evening looks good for some at-home fireworks. And here's a look at the 10-day forecast. Rain a little bit better chance as we head into the work week next week. Overall, not any washouts by any means, just a very typical summertime forecast. Back to you. You know, the kids want to get in the pool, but it's it's tricky this year because they're not going to camp with lifeguards and with their camp counselors to keep the extra eye on them. So we've got Tony Guillory. He's here. He's the Association Director of Aquatics at the Greater YMCA of Houston. And let's just dive, no pun intended, let's just dive right on in to talking about water safety this summer and what parents should know. Rule number one, numero uno, do not swim alone. Have someone watching you if your parents are going to be in the backyard with you make sure they are watching the pool not reading not having an mp3 player on water watches your eyes are the are the main key of, of safety and make sure that they're never alone i don't care how many times you drill them into your kids don't go out by themselves or they know it make sure someone is at the pool with their kids at all times eyes are the best safety i have to mention this but the cell phone you got to stay off the cell phone while your kids are in the pool because it's such a distraction even if it rings and you look down for two seconds 
to see who's calling. Please, please keep the cell phones out of reach. If you're going to use your cell phone, make sure you get your kid out of the water and they're sitting next to you, not while they're in the water. It's a big distraction. What are a few things that parents should keep around their pool as just-in-case measures? A pool noodle, which is this, and they hold on to it really tight with assistance. A life jacket, they can have the arm attachments, but they're made out of foam that they're connected to the chest and they're also connected to the arms. That way, that type of, of flotation will keep them afloat instead of the plastic ones where they are separately on the arms and they're pop. And I know this is the oldest trick in the book. It's how my mom got me out of the water, but I, I gotta address it. Is there a rule for eating and then getting back in the pool? Are you waiting 30 minutes, Tony? Yes, you are waiting 30 minutes because the minute you eat and you get in the water and start activity, <laughs> you're probably going to start feeling sick. <laughs> and you don't want a big mess into the pool. So really eat, wait 30 minutes before you get into the water, not 10, not 20, but 30 minutes, time it, and then get into the water. We're here in Houston where it can be beautiful outside one minute, and then the next minute the storms are rolling in. If parents who have their kids in the water see lightning or thunder, are they out for a solid 15 minutes while the thunder and lightning passes? They are out for a solid 30 minutes. With That means nothing is happening. You hear thunder, see lightning, immediately get out. You wait 30 minutes, and then if it's clear, then you get back into the water. But the, the rule is to wait 30 minutes before you even attempt to get back into the, into the water. So parents, it's just mainly keep your eye on the kids this summer. If they're in the water, if they're near the water, make sure they're not running around by the poolside. Keep those extra safety flotation devices handy because you just never know what you can toss in the water and really help save someone's life. And you know what, Tony, I will also mention Knowing CPR or taking a CPR class is very beneficial if you have young kids and a pool. Yes, I mean, it, it helps because, you know, kids tend to swallow water, but it's very beneficial if you know CPR. That way you can assist in case something happens. Tony Guillory, thank you so much for your time. We can't wait to get back at the YMCA. Thank you for these awesome tips. That's good. Have a good one. All right, Lauren Kelly, thank you for that. Such an important conversation considering how many children drown every single year. Absolutely. It's tragic. Absolutely. Be avoided. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, a local woman finds a creative way to support small businesses. See how she's promoting their brands over big box stores. But first, three creative ideas to help you host a small, socially distant gathering for Independence Day, including how to make a festive ice bucket stand out of an old walker. just two days away from Independence Day. And this year, even though you probably won't be celebrating with a whole lot of guests, you can still add some festive decor to liven up the mood for you and your quarantine buddies. That's right. Upcycling expert Sarah Terezinski, along with her son, Sebastian, shares some fun DIY projects that are all under $10. And we want to point out the segment was recorded before the coronavirus outbreak. That's uh, super fun. I'd like to find things that people don't usually use. So when I'm in the thrift store, I'm like, what can I do with that? You know, so I saw a walker and, you know, like crutches, there's a ton of them always. Yeah. Right. So I bought a walker. I spray painted it gray, the color that I like, but you could do any color you want. And these were old metal buckets that I got secondhand. I used duct tape, you guys, to attach the handles to the undersides of the walker and then loaded it with beverages. And then you load it with ice. You can move it all around. I mean, you can, because it's a walker, so it's movable. I, I mean, can you like walk? with it. Like you guys, could and flip it around. Over Bear, here. Flip that around. On the opposite side, look what's on the opposite side. You, you could have, have all the towels and everything. Spot to hang oh, your perfect. towels. Sarah, it is so clever and so unexpected. I would never imagine I, you, know, you could turn something into that. I mean, very either, cool. Really. I like the, the fact that you use duct tape. So yeah. it's very easy to So you really are using together. very little and it's super inexpensive. And I've used it for my kids' books and flowers, like ferns and stuff you could put in there. Very cool. And all under 10 bucks. All under 10 bucks. I love it. Okay, well, let's talk about red, white, and blue garland. Yes. This is one of those things that I hate buying at a party store because yeah. it's super expensive. So if I can do it at home, why not? Yeah, and it's really fun. So this is one we can actually... Seb, will you hold one side for me, bud? Okay, hold it tight. And then we'll let Miss Courtney hold the other. Okay. Derek? Derek can hold the other. Sure. So basically, we've got these tablecloths. You guys know these tablecloths, right? These plastic tablecloths. Okay. And oh, this is a great 
great way to upcycle them or just to, you can get them cheap at the dollar store. Yeah. So do you want to cut a strip? Okay. You would cut one. You just leave it folded to make these. But am I cutting all the way through? Yeah, cut all the way through. And then when you get it cut all the way through, you kind of pull it out in a strip and you cut it in half. And then you've got a bunch of these strips. And then what you do with the strips in all different colors is you take your red, white, and your blue. And then, Courtney, I'm just going to let you oh, tie, just tie it. There's just no tie special it. loop or anything. Around the string. Just tie it. And then you gather them all up, and it makes this really fun, festive, and it looks more expensive than it is. Absolutely. Um, garland, and you're upcycling tablecloths. And, Sebastian, do you help your mom with these projects a lot? Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Are you kind always of. working on something around the house? Mm, kind of. Kind, kind of. of. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Seven. good. Seven. Yeah. He kind of does stuff. He kind of does stuff. That's Amazing. what we do for seven weeks. So the idea do. then is you just continue this pattern yeah. and you end up with something like we have up, on the yeah, front of the table. Yeah, you can do it as long there. as you want. You can set your kids at it and it takes up some time. A fun summer activity. Get ready for your party. It's a great Absolutely. idea. And it costs what? Just a few bucks a by few the time bucks, you yeah. buy it. Or if after you use these, um, sometimes people, I don't buy these, but some people do, just put them in the closet. And, yeah, put it with the yeah, rest of your party like, stuff. Yeah, and just reuse it. And you can use it for bows on gifts and, you know, all sorts of stuff. Super fun. Okay, what's next? Okay, so this is one Sebastian. Ashton's going to help us with. Okay, so this is a really festive way to make um, table or candles for your table. So red, white, and blue rice, yep. right? So I figured out a way, instead of using rubbing alcohol, because that's usually what you have to use to, with the food coloring to get okay. things to stick, to use a little vinegar. So we're going to let Seb help us with this one. Sebby, we're going to do a little bit of white rice in a container. Do you want to put some drops of food coloring in here for me? Take that lid off and put in as many drops as you like. And you put the food coloring directly, yep, directly on, on the, the rice. rice. You got it. Just pull it straight off. Oh. Here, you do this one. Okay. Okay, put it straight on the rice like this. You do that side, and I'll do this side. And this is just a regular food coloring yep. that you would get at the grocery store in the baking section. Exactly. And really, you can do as many drops as you feel color-wise you want. Okay. Depending so, on how vibrant you want it. Yep. And then while we're doing, Seb's putting that in there, we do two... Table, uh, tablespoons of white vinegar. Okay, so very similar to our Easter eggs, right? That's right. This is kind of what? Kind of the same thing. Okay, Seb, you And done. are we going to shake? Yeah, or what put are we the lid do? on put and the lid shake on. it up. Okay. This is going to be pretty red, I think. So I think it's going to be super red. Now, Seb, this is your job. You want to shake this one? We'll let Miss Courtney shake that one. You want to okay, shake that? All right, look. Yeah. And she can shake the blue. Okay. And then you shake them, shake them, shake them. And they turn these awesome colors. And this is really a great thing for sensory, for kids as well. Sure. That's, you know, you're not putting any chemicals and things and they can play with it. And then once you get it all done, you want to set it flat, right, Seb? Then we open it up. up. There you go. And then you put this outside. I just put mine outside for an hour. And they dry. Oh, good job, Ooh, buddy. Great job Whoa. on the color. That's like way better than the red I did. That's good. And look how evenly distributed the color is. Yeah. So the white vinegar, as you mentioned, that's the key. That's the key. And all the rice gets it, coated. Look, it doesn't get on your fingers. Oh, like, it's already the, dry. The rice yeah. will. But you can play with it, and you don't have to worry about your kids being all. Yeah, and then you just put your, layer it in the glasses, and then what do we put our little votive on top? I Fun? love it. Super cute. Okay. A great okay. idea. So yeah. this is, next one is really cool. My youngest son is totally into, like, the thread bracelets. Okay. Is that what you have here? Yeah, so he would totally dig this. Okay, so these are guitar strings. Put that out there so everyone can see. So I saw these really great circle bracelets, and I was like, okay, what? how can we do this? So really pretty. If you go to Guitar Center and ask them for... Guitar strings, they will give you upcycled old strings. They have a box of them. They do? At least they did for me. So, I mean, you know, I, they have them in the back, and if you ask for them, you'll get them. So you take it in your fingers, and you make a little loop, and all you have to do is hold on to that little piece right there, whatever size circle you want, and you want to go in and out, and in and out. All the way around. All the way around. So that'll take a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time, but when you're all done, it ends up looking like this. Ah, this very right cool. Here. So then, what you do with that, which one of you guys have that? How do you right? tie off the ends, or do you? You just you don't. Sort of, you just feed it all the way through, through. And any extra that you have, you can take just your little clippers and just do a little snip on the extra wire, and then it kind of all lays nice and flat. And then Very you take cool. your strings. You want to hand the strings to him, Seb? Already did. You did. They got plenty. Okay, cool. Oh, awesome. So then you take Thanks, your buddy. strings and you put them underneath the loop. Okay. Like kind of like that little knot that we did for tutus, and you just oh, feed it. Okay. oh I see. Yeah, you put both through, and then it feeds right through to make this little 
this little knot. And then yeah. you could do one on the other side. And on the other side, you can use any colors you want. That doesn't have to be Fourth of July colors. But this is also a really fun thing, maybe for the older kids his age and up, because the guitar strings can be a little pointy. Okay. Um, and then you just tie them on your wrist, guys. You can stack them up, and I think they look pretty cool. Look at Very that. Cool. Isn't that cool? Folks. Very, very cool. Nobody will know that you didn't pay a lot of money at a little boutique for exactly. something like that. Sarah, you always have such great ideas. Sebastian, thanks so much for coming and hanging out. Yeah. Can you say thank yeah, you? Perfect. Oh, He's great. got the hang oh. <laughs> He's got the mic. He's ready. He's a great professional. To see you. Very, very nice. And as always, if you would like to connect with Sarah, you can visit the scene on Houston Life section of our. You know, small businesses, of course, have been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, but one local woman is helping them fight back. As a business owner herself, she knows the best way to get through this is together. Always, right? Carla Lyles, owner of Carla Sue Greeting Cards and Gifts, shares the creative way she's been helping her fellow entrepreneurs. I was just watching, um, just watching the Home Shopping Network. And now you can get this one of a kind item for the low, low price of just. And uh, I thought to myself that I could probably do the same thing for uh, people in my community solely to help small businesses during this crisis. really cool way to support my community. Just recreate the same kind of feeling of the Home Shopping Network, but more offbeat and cool. It's the Carla Sue Network. It's a Home Shopping Network, you know? What a homie. And then I put it out on social media to make sure that they get some publicity. I basically was gonna do this solely for myself. <laughs> I lost my job. I got laid off like many people. Sales slowed down dramatically with my small business. So I was thinking, okay, how can I promote myself? But then I started to speak with my small business friends and just hearing their stories, which were just so heart-wrenching. And I immediately went into the mode of like, okay, how can I help everyone, including myself? They have been sending me just video footage of them with their products or pictures, and I make a slideshow, and I do a little voiceover, put on my best Home Shopping Network voice. <laughs> uh, a lot of the uh, businesses have contacted me and let me know that, you know, they've gotten a lot of leads off of it. They have some followers now, new supporters. So um, it's been great, and that's all I wanted was just them to be able to just get the proper support during this time because those small businesses are suffering pretty bad right now. Skincare products, clothing, baby clothing. I have a person that has a farmer's market that are they're growing their own fruits and veggies. So it's a whole array of uh, businesses just to show everyone in the city that you can buy everything you need right here locally. We do a lot of um, outdoor markets, a lot of small businesses, but you know, that's how they start. They start doing the outdoor market circuits, pop-up markets, festivals. You know, we see a lot of the same businesses at these markets in this circuit. And uh, we get to know each other. We get to know each other's families. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a really strong community here in Houston. You know, I am a part of this community of small businesses in the city. And uh, just to be able to support them in any way that I can just feels good, it feels right. So I'm definitely going to keep doing it. Well, to connect with Carla, visit our website at houstonlife.tv. And we'll be right back. He's coming back too, I promise. Coming up on tomorrow's show, we have 4th of July entertaining how to plan for a socially distant backyard barbecue with America's CEO, that's Chief Entertaining Officer Tim Laird. He's back with some festive cocktails to party food and entertaining tips like how to keep the bugs out of your drinks. You know what? He never disappoints.
He never does. Ever. He never does. By the way, uh, the reason I wasn't here is because I went back out to the truck. And you never disappoint either. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. And thanks again to Christine and Louise <laughs> and the gang from Bovine and Barley. Cheers to you. Starting off our early celebration. All right, so uh, Lauren Kelly has tweeted that viewer Gail wanted to see the old set, and here you go. Oh, look at us. The, the three of us at the on stage at the Galleria. Get the doors. Yeah, get, yeah, get the doors. We'll try to find a wider shot so you can see <laughs> what it actually looked like in there. We look, we all look very confused in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening? Who, who are we and what are we doing here? We're doing a show at the mall? Yeah, I know. It, it happened. It, it did. A thing. Hey, a little update from our viewer Liz. Uh, Gizmo barking at himself. <sighs> Let's see. Barking at texts. Barking text. at text. Oh, wait a minute. Hold so on. we roll the video, oh. and that's him. Oh. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, Gizmo, Barry. we love you. <laughs> so he, Gizmo's like, wait, wait, that's me. Mom, look, Hang on, me. hang on. I'm on TV. I'm on TV. Oh, my gosh. He is adorable. Oh, I love it. Amazing. I know. Well, cheers to our friends at Bovine and Barley. Y'all have been texting them because Christina has been saying, that's all I'm doing is answering all these phone calls. So you guys know what's up with the socially distant cocktail drop-offs. It's important. Yes, it is indeed. What? Why was the pause? No, you're right. The you're dog right. barking? Sorry, the delay is back. The delay is back. No, I was just thinking, I'm really glad that I have a lot of work to do at my desk this afternoon. I've got a lot of emails to send. I'm going to be at work for a few hours. A few hours. Let Absolutely. This off. Oh, yeah. Well, there's none in mine, so it's okay. <laughs> it's just you. <laughs> it's just a prop. Thank you all so much for joining us today. That was a lot of fun. You want to do it again tomorrow? Let's do it. Okay. Same time, same place. See you here at one. Be Cheers. Safe.